So Nomad Sculpt is um, the interface it hasn't changed that much in recent months, but there's a few, a few people getting confused with what's going on. So where I've got older videos and uh, one or two things have been moved, I'm going back and redoing them. So this one's all about depth filtering. So I'll explain what that is and where the buttons move to, which isn't very far. So I'll, uh, I'll dive right into that. So to understand depth filtering, what I'm going to do is just sculpt something up and paint it. So I'm going to take uh, just a basic sphere and I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to um, increase the resolution with multi-resolution. So multi-res and subdivide twice. And then I'm going to come down here with the um, tools or brushes and just find stamp. And then I'm going to pick um, an alpha. Now I'm going to use this one, which is barnacles. Um, don't forget, check in our description down below, join our hub, and there's loads of these free alphas in there. So with that now, I can drag this on the surface, and it'll give me um, a particular pattern. Now I'm going to undo it, two fingers. I'm going to turn symmetry off and do it again. And I'm, at the moment, we've got sub hit, which means it's gonna, it, it was inverting it. So if I pull it out now, you'll see that it's giving me the surface like that. So what that's doing is it's affecting the surface dependent on a number of things. So one is this here, the intensity. So if I go really high, it'll come up really high. Go really low, it'll go really low and flat against the surface like that. So we'll have that one really high. And then what we'll do is we'll do some of the sub. So hit sub again. So it's going to do the opposite of that now. And that'll give me little dots that are indenting in. And you'll see why I'm doing that in a moment. So I'm going to do quite a few around and then I make it really strong and do a really deep one down here or some really deep ones so that's affected the surface in a different way okay so why have I done that so as you can see from the side that's sculpted up so it's coming up off the surface or out of the surface and it's going in deep into the surface as well so let's now move to painting so come over to paint find paint We'll just use a really basic colour, so we'll just use, in fact, we'll just use grey, rocky colour, and we'll just paint over. We could flood fill it, so we could go up here and we could go paint all. And there you go, floods it all with that grey colour. Let's change the background so you can see it quite clearly what's going on. Get rid of the gradient. So it's a bit dark, but you should be able to see it with the... Um, uh, with the reflective material on. So what we want to do now is do some painting on this that only either affects the top of these little barnacles or down deep into the holes. So what we do is, first of all, in fact, what might be better is a bit of a lighter grey, only because I want to be able to show you a bit better. So there you go. You might be able to see that a bit better. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is change the colour to a bright red or la like a lava and that'll mean you can see it when I when I paint it. So if I was to paint it now, it would just paint over it, as, as you, I'm sure you know. So depth filtering used to just be here at the top. But if you come across one now and come down to the bottom, you've got depth masking, it's called now. And if you tap that, you get this little panel here. So it's pinned open so you can see what's going on. This little line in the middle is the surface of the model. So if you, on here, this line would equate to this surface here. So it's where the model is as an average acro across the whole model. And this other thing here, this little yellow thing, if you do height offset, you can bring that up or down. And that means it's gonna paint either above the surface or below the surface. And you might play with this and get no results. And, and this is how I've ended up getting results. So if you affect these buttons at the bottom, these sliders at the bottom, you can make the uh, top of the curve flatter, or the, or, or, sorry, the bottom of the curve flatter or the top of the curve flatter. But the big important thing I've found is, is if you keep this offset all the way under or all the way over the surface, I find that's where I get the best results. And then I play with these um, curve settings. So first of all, let's bring it all the way down so we're well under the surface and see what happens. So we've got the red set and we're on paint, so let's just see. So I'll paint on a flat area first and see what happens. So hardly anything is happening. It is just about showing through there. So let's go and have a look around here and we'll paint now into where there's a dip under the surface. 
And if you look here, that's where it really shows. So this is really cool for doing cracks and crevices. This is under, under the surface and it's now painting under the surface, which is super, super powerful. This is great for landscape work, for environment work, for uh, creatures, um, where you want to really get deep down into the cracks with your painting. And then let's change the color, we'll change it to yellow so you can see what I'm doing. And then we'll bring that height offset all the way out. No, so it's way, 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 way up at the top. And now have a look, and you can see there, it's now painting the top, roughly the top of the model. It's going down into it, because it's, you know, it's, it's obviously got its own internal algorithm settings. So what you might want to do is come to stroke, and instead of being on dot, do something like lock and radius, which means you can drag out the, the shape. And you can see there, you might get different effects. It's not perfectly working there. So that means we might need to change the um, settings a little bit. So we'll go back in to our depth filtering. Just bring that down closer to the surface and you can see there playing now with the bottom area, we might get a different effect there. So you can see how uh, these settings have dramatic effects. If I bring that to the surface, you'll get much more of a fill. If I bring the top one flatter, you'll get pretty much the, you know, it doesn't make a lot of difference in this scenario. If I bring this completely underground and then bring that up a little bit, you can see there we can get some, they're only very, very subtle, but I'm, I'm really deep down inside the, the, the crevices. It's only just showing there a tiny, tiny bit, as you can see it flickering. Um, and then keep playing with those settings until until you get the, the, the effect that you want. Move it closer to the center and see what effect you get. You, you, you know, you're gonna get some really random effects until you learn to control this uh, properly. But that is how we use depth masking. It's a super useful one. Um, I, I do use it in loads and loads of things. So let's open one up and see what where I've used it. So if you're doing characters and creatures that have got a lot of surface detail, so this is some kind of a, uh, like a bone demon here, and he's got like this skull area, uh, sorry, the brain area inside his skull. So if we try and paint that, but if we come back up to our depth f masking here and we bring it down deep inside, in fact, no, we'll bring this all the way to the surface, uh, like above the surface, and we'll go for like a, a pinky color on the top. You can see now, if I change back on the stroke to dot and see what we get now, you can see here, right along here, I'm just getting it on the surface. Too much intensity. And then I'll, I'll roll the lighting around a little bit so you can see it a bit better. Bring it around here. Keep messing with the depth masking um, height above the surface because you're going to get different effects. And you can see that it's giving me just a painting across the top. So that's where it gets really, really useful is that, you know, you, you, you know you're painting on the top or if I really wanted to, I'll go deep down inside, make it blacker than black and then just paint in those cracks. And they're the kind of, of, of uh, scenarios where I would use this quite a lot. Um, you know, c certainly something with this level of, um, you know, uh, height and depth in one part of the model it's definitely a useful tool so as you can see it's only moved a couple across it's not a major tweak i totally get what stefan the developer is doing he's putting he's organizing these panels um it's not a major interface change a lot of these tweaks now are just putting things in the right place so it's just a case of looking where the the the, the thing has moved to and then and then learning you know making sure you do understand this because this is this might be new to some people it's very common in programs like zbrush to have a a, a depth um, reflecting the surface of the model here but if you're not used to it you know i, I, I totally get that but once you know where it is um quite straightforward happy new year Happy New Year, everyone. I hope you're having a lovely time. It's um, the 2nd of January here for me in the UK, and we're just launching into our New Year projects. So good to be getting back with Nomad today, and we've obviously just released our Creature course over Christmas, so if you're interested in that, please feel free to look at the links down below or join us on our Facebook groups. Have a great week.